So now we're going to talk about studio mode. Studio mode allows you to preview another scene before making it live for your audience. Otherwise, this large preview that you see is what everyone sees. So I've got two scenes here and I actually can't preview what's in this other scene. So if I just clicked it, it would take me to whatever that content is. Now, what if I want to be certain of what's in that scene before I go there? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that using studio mode. I haven't showed you how to add anything to scenes yet, but we're going to get to that in a future video. For now, I just want to make sure you understand studio mode because I'd like you to do your work in studio mode as you move through this course. So go all the way to the right hand side and click studio mode. And now you'll see two windows. The right hand side window is the program side and that is the live side. And the left hand side is your preview side. That's just for you to see what scene you have selected. So now if I click into my second scene in my scene list, I can see what the other scene looks like without making it live for the audience yet. And that's going to allow me to do a lot of things. Not only am I going to be confident about what I'm about to show them, but I can also even do some editing or build a scene while another scene is still live. The other thing that this allows you to do is choose how to transition from scene to scene. Now you'll notice when you enabled studio mode that there are buttons here in the middle for transitioning. And there already are some quick transitions loaded as buttons here. You can use cut to simply cut quickly from scene to scene. You can use fade to crossfade from one to the other. And you can actually change the duration of that fade by clicking the little arrow next to it and changing this value here. This is currently set to 300 milliseconds, which is three tenths of a second. But let's say we wanted a full second. We would change this to 1000. And now when we click it, the transition takes place more slowly over the course of a full second. Now the transition button actually uses the global transition and you would find that in this scene transitions dock. And if you don't have that dock, click view docs scene transitions. And whatever is set on this dropdown is the global transition. Currently it's a fade with a 300 millisecond duration. So if I click transition, then it is going to do exactly that. If you wanted the global transition to be a cut so that when you click transition, it cuts, then you would want to change this in the dock to cut. And now when I click transition, it just cuts. Now the last thing is what I mentioned before, that you can edit on the preview side without affecting what is live. And I'm going to show you that in just a few steps. So if we are in a different scene from the one that's currently live, I can be editing that and still have what's live on the right hand side there for the audience to view. I can also edit the scene that we are currently in by going to that scene and making changes. And notice that even though it's the same scene as the one that is live for the audience, it's not changing what they're seeing in real time. And then if I want to introduce that change, I can transition it over to the live side and now it's live for them. But know that once you've made that change, you've edited that scene. And so you'll notice that the preview side and the live side match because that is the change that I made to that scene. Now, I highly recommend that while taking this course, you use studio mode for everything as you follow step by step. There are exceptions like when making fine tuning adjustments to the elements in your scene. And I'll show you that when we get to that stage. But in my opinion, studio mode is the best way to learn. It's a good habit to form. And the next video, we're going to teach you how to start adding things to scenes in OBS.